all my paranormal seekers welcome back to paranormal corner I know it's been a hot minute since we've done an episode last it's been what, since October when the first episode aired but we're back and what I got a lineup for you but before we get to all that I'd like to welcome to the stage, Daisy. Welcome, Daisy. Hi! Now, JC has graciously volunteered to share her paranormal experiences with, with everyone. So, tell us yep, a bit. I got two different. So t huh? Tell us a bit about yourself before we get started. Um, so, I am JC, I'm 17, and I live with my father now, but prior I lived with my mom, so that's where the stories are going to come from. And, she is also dating my best friend. I am. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's how I was able to get in contact with her, through him. Thank you, David. I'll see you later. <laughs> so. Alright, you ready? Yeah, I'm asking the first question to start it off. Okay. How long has the activity been going on, and when did it? When did you first start to see or experience the activity? So, the first story I have actually, like, pertains to my brother. He was the one seeing it, because I heard that younger people are more prone to, like, seeing activities like that. And that started off when he was about five, so I'd say I was around 13, 14. So recently. Recently? I'm 17. <laughs> yeah, 13, 14, that's not too long ago. It's still pretty recent. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. And then my other story is probably a couple years later, so around 15, 16. Probably more 15. Still very re recent. Yes. So, get on to your first story. Okay, so, my first story, my brother used to have this, what we called imaginary friend, because we didn't know at the time, and he simply called him the guy. But the guy was like a great imaginary friend, so we just rolled with it. And the one day, my brother came in and said the guy had stole his bike. We thought nothing of it. And a while later, my mom was shuffling through photos to um, get ready for like a wedding or some kind of event. And my brother points to this picture and he goes, hey, mom, that's the guy. My mom's like, what guy? He's like, the guy. And my mom's like, what guy? He's like, mom, the guy that stole my bike. And the craziest thing about it was the point, the picture he was pointing to was a picture of my mom's dad who had died when she was young, when she was around 14, 15. So we never got to meet him, but my brother must have been be best friends with him. Then my brother had another imaginary friend who was not a good influence, and his name was Jake. And Jake was, like, Jake convincing him... <laughs> Well, he, calm down. Jake is a child. <laughs> no, but the name, the name Jake is such a douchebag name. It is. It really is. <laughs> yes, Jake would, like, convince Dion. Dion's my brother. He would convince Dion to, like, cut up his clothes and shit. So one day my mom's like, Jake needs to leave. He needs to go find his mom. And my brother was young, so he didn't know a lot about anything. So that's why this, like, pointed us as weird. Because my mom's like, Jake needs to go find his mom. And Dion goes, Jake can't find his mom. His mom died in a car crash. She's in heaven. We, he has to wait for her here. And when I like try to look into that, a lot of kids who die and don't accept that they're dead like to stay between realms. So I don't think Jake knew he was dead and just kind of was lurking around. And I also did research into car accidents around my area. And there was a couple like right in front of my house. Huh? What are you drinking tonight? Water. I'm, <laughs> I'm drinking some Arizona. 
I have water. I also have some Mountain Dew, but I only drank that with dinner. So those are the stories of my brother's, like, two imaginary friends that, like, creeped us out. True, true. And then, are you ready for my other story? Because that one's definitely longer. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm ready. All right. So my other story was a little while later, after we had, like, completely got moved into the house. And the house was, like, a big, old, really old house. It had, like, a jacuzzi and then if a lot of different bedrooms. If you watch huh. the first episode, uh, as well, if you listen to the first episode of the podcast, my friend Jill also lives in an uh, old house. Yeah, that's usually where everything starts, is old houses. True, true. So I'm going to explain a little bit of the layout of the house, because that's going to kind of pertain to the story. So, if you walk into the front door, which we never use, but if you walk into the front door, you walk right into the kitchen. If you walk a co down a couple of steps, there's a hallway. My room is in that hallway. Walk further, and there's the living room. Then, if you go back to the kitchen and walk into the kitchen and to the side, there's the dining room. So, that's the point of the layout that pertains to the story. So... Basically, a while after I had moved in, and I was like 14 or 13 at the time, so... Or 14 or 15. And I was, I had this dream that I was like, you know, prancing around my room in my little dress up outfit. And the lights cut out, which is not, you know, abnormal for a country house. We lived out in the country and lights go out all the time. So in my dream, I had like searched for a candle or a flashlight and my back was against my door. And when in the dream, the door flung open and something had grabbed me by the back of my shirt dragged me up those steps through the kitchen and into the dining room and then stood in front of me and this is gonna sound crazy but it stood in front of me and had like a blue light behind it and I saw its figure and it was just stared at me and then I woke up so that freaked me out but I thought nothing of it that until I had a friend that could have been sleep paralysis. I do have sleep paralysis but this is the thing there's more to it <laughs> Um, my friend had came over. We're just, we'll just call her Melanie. So Melanie came over and after we had like, you know, spent the night, woke up in the morning, she goes, I'm really uncomfortable at your house. And I was like, why did we like not make you feel comfortable or nothing? She's like, no, no, your, your house has bad vibes. And I was like, what do you mean? She's like, well, I had a dream last night that this spiritual lady was just screaming in my face. And I was like, oh, well, that's really weird. And I told her about my story and we started talking and looking into it. And like the information we gathered is that there's this really angry woman spirit who's older. And there's something about the trees with her because she likes to lurk around the trees. And then there's this younger, nice guy who likes to stay in the living room. We think he died in the living room because that's where he stays. But he's a nicer spirit. So... My next experience was a couple weeks later, I was, um, like, cutting vegetables at my sink. And if you look, like, if you're at my sink, you can look through into the dining room because we have this bar. So I was, like, cutting these vegetables, and I saw something walk past me. So, like, I didn't think anything of it, and I jokingly said, do it again. And then the lady, I'm pretty sure, because she's the mean one, <laughs> I'm going to sound crazy, but I swear to you, she knocked a shoe off of my dining room table. And I, like, freaked out. <laughs> and my mom also had an experience, but I don't particularly remember. It was something with, like, she was having a party with her friends, and they knocked over a bottle of alcohol or something. But, like, these crazy things. And then stuff would come up in different places and stuff. So I did a little bit of research to try to look into stuff, as always. And I found out that a guy did commit suicide in our house. So I'm thinking that that's, like, the nice guy because he's, like, not angry about his death because, you know, he did it to himself. So he's just trying to, you know, live his life out in the house. I found out that two dogs died there, never felt their presence, but two dogs died there in a horrific way. They, the owner locked them in the, in the garage and just left them there to eat each other, which they did. But I never found anything on the girl, but I feel like she might have been, like, killed and buried near the trees or something crazy like that. Because she's just a very angry spirit. And... 
Yeah. And then my uncle. When you do that, I suggest you bring a cop with you. Just in case of other names. Yeah. So my uncle end up, ended up moving in the house after we had um, moved out. And he had a priest bless it because he heard about our stories and everything. And when the priest had came over, he's like, yeah, there's probably more than five spirits in here. And a lot of them are evil. So he had like blessed the house and everything. And my uncle hasn't said he'd had any experiences after that, but... He said that there was like actually a lot of presence and we hadn't even touched the tip of it while living there for like three years. Crazy. Definitely. But I highly suggest you can go back, get a cop, and see if there are any remaining by the trees. And it's a perfect place to like, if you wanted to bury a body or something, because. It's like this perfect patch of trees and there's like a center in the middle of it. So the trees block out from the road and the other trees block out from the house. It's like this little section, you know? So I don't doubt it at any thing at like, I don't doubt it at all. Like it's obviously just a conspiracy, but she tries, she lurks outside and just comes in when she's mad or something. And the guy, I feel like, she you know, killed himself in the living. She looks, out, looks outside by the trees. We've like, oh. Then it's possible that the bones are buried in that patch. Yeah. Because spirits don't usually go far from where they died and where they're buried. Yeah. Because there's a, uh, here in Toronto, Lower Bay Station, there was a woman in red who tumbled down the, sta down the stairs of the lo to the Lower Bay Station. She hit her head and she died from blood loss from the cracking of the skull. And yeah. she has been seen at the doors of the stairs. Yeah. So I know I I know that spirits like to either stay where they're comfortable or where they've where they lie. And that station is actually used for movies. Oh God. <laughs> so. Yeah. Um. And then the guy like lurks. He he never seems to go anywhere but the living room and kitchen. We never saw him in the back of the house or anything, or felt him, I guess, in the back of the house. So I feel like he either like killed himself in the living room or my room, um, which is weird because my room actually of the house was an add-on for an old sick man because my room had a bathroom in it. Or and he was killed in the kitchen and then moved to the living room to make it look like a suicide. Could be. I don't, I didn't look too far into how he killed himself, so I don't particularly know, like, if he, you know, hung himself, if he overdosed or anything like that to see, like, if it could have been a cover up. Well, if you're saying, it's, if you're saying the house is old as it is, it could have been there you know, during the 20s. Yeah. And what happened during the 20s? A lot of prohibition. Pro prohibition. Oh, yeah, I didn't even think of that. So he could have been stealing from someone, and they killed him in his kitchen, brought him to the living room, and that's where they just left him to make it look like a suicide. And maybe he's just not an angry spirit because he knows what he did. Yeah, yeah. You Cause say, I, as you said, he moved from the living room to the kitchen back and forth. Yeah, he kind of just walks around. Doesn't really do anything. But I feel like in that dream, he was, like, trying to save me from something. Like, the woman was in the room, and he's like, nah. This is my child, <laughs> or something. Like, he seems to be a nice guy. True, true. 
we've also we never like felt the dogs but in the garage because we used to have um, a weightlifting room it was a three-car garage so we had a weightlifting room and a storage room and then we put our cars in there and we felt something like we'd feel it brush our ankles and stuff we never thought much of it but there was two dogs that had died in there have you got any unexplained scratches no, it was just like brushes around our legs and stuff where we'd like no, feel something. From the evil spirits. Oh, from like the lady? Yeah. My friend did when she had like woken up. Or it might have been like another day after, but she woke up with scratches, I think on her back or her legs. Yeah, they know and for the back. Yeah. But the lady really never messed with me, but I feel like, again, because that woman or that man was there. But she did that one day when she knocked that shoe off the table and everything freaked me the fuck out. But it was because I was I was home alone and I felt like she felt like that was her opportunity. And, um... Like, she, nobody else really, I feel like my mom's encounter was with a guy, because she didn't feel anything, like, evil or anything, and then my brother didn't have any experiences, but we did have, we had a dog and a puppy at the time. The dog was still a puppy, but she was older, and she used to just bark at things, and... Yeah, she just, like... Especially if we had like let her outside because we were doing yard work and stuff, she would go around those trees and bark, which is like we're like okay, there's something there, and then she'd bark out the um. We had a sliding patio door that led to our backyard where we usually let them out to go to the bathroom, and like she'd bark at the door and we let her out and she'd like turn right back around and like look at us to let her back in. Like she wasn't barking to go outside; she was barking at something. Get a cop, go to that patch, and see if they remain. Yeah. I can almost guarantee you that there are. If not, it'll be a fun adventure. <laughs> we used to try to think of like putting a playhouse over there. <laughs> and my mom was always like, no, don't put a playhouse there. Right, if we would have put that over there, that lady would have been pissed. You're gonna make a playhouse out of my grave? <laughs> but we used to have um, a hammock. It wasn't near the trees, it was actually near the back of our house. But I used to lay on the hammock and read all the time, because I like to get the sun and just, you know, read. I like to read. And I just, I wouldn't stay out there more than like 15 minutes, because I felt weird, and I was like, nah, I gotta go in. Speaking of which, today is International Book Day. Is it really? Yep. Oh, I'm gonna have to get down a book to read. Yep, after we're done with the session. Right, yeah. So, not a lot of experiences, particularly, but it was definitely a weird time living in that house, because that house is where, like, 90% of it had happened. Yep, I'll have to, I'm going to have to think about it and, like, talk to my mom, because I know there's a couple more that we had had. Okay, sounds good. Awesome. Well, JC, I would like to thank you for joining me tonight. Thank you for having me. And this episode will be up tomorrow. Today for who's ever watching it on Monday. And... I'll see you guys in, in the next episode where we talk to my, my friend Laura, who has experience of her own. Until next time, stay spooky.